स्कोर एग्जाम फिर से नंबर नहीं आए ना कोई बात नहीं स्पीकिंग में बार बार रह रहे हैं स्पीकिंग में फिफ्टी भी नहीं ले पा रहे हैं स्पीकिंग बहुत अच्छा है अनडाउटली स्पीकिंग बहुत अच्छा है बहुत अच्छी तरह से बोल रहे हैं तो क्या रीज़न है सो सी दैट इट्स लाइक ए ह्यूमन ईयर्स जैसे हमारे कान होते हैं उसी तरह से इस सॉफ्टवेयर के भी कुछ कान हैं कुछ कुछ फ्रिक्वेंसी को ही ग्रैप कर सकता है सो इफ़ योर वॉइस इज़ नॉट अप टू दैट पर्टिकुलर फ्रिक्वेंसी सो सो सॉरी आपका स्कोर कभी नहीं आएगा सो फॉर दैट अब क्या करना चाहिए यू कैन डू दैट येस यू हैव टू मैनिपुलेट योर वॉइस आपको थोड़ा सा चेंजेस करना होगा एंड यू कैन गेट अ वेरी गुड स्कोर एंड फेलिंग सो फॉर दैट द सेंड मी योर पर्टिकुलर ऑडियो मुझे अपनी ऑडियो भेजिए पूरे पूरे मॉक टेस्ट की और आफ्टर दैट आई विद वैल्यूएट कि कहाँ पर क्या आपको करना चाहिए सो आई फील दैट नेक्स्ट एग्जाम यू गेट अ वेरी गुड स्कोर हैव अस फिर पा So, various conclusions. Yes, bees are in decline. These declines are well documented. They are real and supported by good, strong scientific evidence, which is the only evidence that counts. The drivers of decline <coughs> are many and varied, depending on the species. The effects of pollinator loss could be absolutely huge. So is it a catastrophe? Not yet. But it could be. On the positive side, we are aware of the problem. Awareness is being raised all the time and people are taking action. Ah, full fix meeting to recognize the problem.
In my view, it's impossible not to talk about wildlife and not think about its role in livelihoods. And I guess part of that is my own view, part of the research that I do in Africa, in most East and West Africa. I look at the role, um, all humans rely on wildlife as a source of food and also the source of income. And we talk about our wildlife, if we talk about fish, we are talking about what is probably the, the single most important source of protein for humans across the globe. And so billions or more, more than a billion people rely on fish as their primary source of animal protein. And most of these people live in poverty. So the management of wild fish resources, in a sense, is incredibly important to livelihoods and health. And also, uh, wildlife tourism is a multi-billion dollar industry. And in many places, such as Africa and South America, it can be the number one source of income it can be the number one source of foreign income for economies.
For a glimpse of what the U.S. economy might look like in the future, we head to Scandinavia. No country is dropping cash as fast as Sweden. Just 13% of people there reported using cash to buy something last year. But as Maddie Savage reports from Stockholm, some Swedes are concerned that things have changed too quickly. Next to the cinnamon buns and open sandwiches at this restaurant, there's a large blue sign with the English word cash crossed out. Notes and coins stopped being accepted here a year ago after staff noticed most people were hardly using them. It was super rare. I'd say 5%, something like that, in the restaurant was using cash. That's general manager Christopher Lerb, who's been keeping an eye on how customers have responded. There's hardly been any reaction. Almost everybody has the alternative payment method, a credit card. And it's good for both the guests and for us. He says scrapping cash saves time at the till and helps protect against theft. There are at least five hotspots of floating plastic in the global ocean. These are gyres where circulating currents trap debris. This one, the so-called Great Pacific Garbage Patch, is the largest, with almost 80,000 tonnes distributed over 600,000 square miles. The scientists teamed up with a charity that collects old fishing gear and other litter from the ocean and gathered hundreds of plastic items to study in the lab. They found plants and animals, including anemones, tiny marine bugs, mollusks and crabs, on 90% of the debris they examined. As well as creating a semi-permanent floating habitat for coastal species in the open ocean, the researchers say all this plastic could be providing invasive species with rafts that allow them to cross the Pacific. This, they say, is yet another unintended consequence of plastic pollution for the ocean. There's growing alarm over plunging insect populations with climate change, habitat destruction and pesticides all thought to play a role. But now scientists say there's another culprit, artificial streetlights. Researchers from the charity Butterfly Conservation counted caterpillars at the sides of brightly lit roads. Compared with similar stretches of unlit roads, caterpillar numbers were reduced by half, suggesting streetlights can affect the abundance of insects, at least on a local scale. The scientists say with insects in trouble, we should be doing all we can to reduce negative influences. But there are practical solutions, such as dimming streetlights in the early hours, installing motion sensors or using colour filters to modify the light. First, there was the keyboard, then the touchscreen. Some tech companies say a wearable pair of glasses could be the next leap in technology, even if it didn't work out for Google Glass. In the future, we won't be only limited to our smartphones when it comes to understanding the world around us. So this is our early investment in that future. The U.S.-based company Snap's investment is this, the Spectacles 3 sunglasses. This third version is smarter than the previous ones. It has two cameras. The corner of the glasses lights up when recording video and allows the wearer to put 3D objects in the video. Here are some flowers. The bird, which is really cool. Users can capture up to a minute of video. So I spent an hour trying on all these damn jeans, and I walked out of the store, truth, with the best-fitting jeans I had ever had. I did better. 
All this choice made it possible for me to do better. But I felt worse. The reason I felt worse is that with all of these options available, my expectations about how good a pair of jeans should be went up. I had very low ex I had no particular expectations hey. when they only came in one flavor. When they came in a hundred flavors, damn it, one of them should have been perfect. And what I got was good, but it wasn't perfect. And so I compared what I got to what I expected, and what I got was disappointing in comparison to what I expected. Adding options to people's lives can't help but increase the expectations people have about how good those options will be. And what that's going to produce is less satisfaction with, with results, even when they're good results. Research suggests that some are more susceptible than others, especially those who are self-conscious, anxious, and afraid of being judged negatively by others. So how can we avoid choking when it really counts? First, it helps to practice under stressful conditions. In a study on expert dart players, researchers found that those who hadn't practiced under stress performed worse when anxious, compared to those who had become accustomed to pressure. Secondly, Many performers extol the virtues of a pre-performance routine, whether it's taking a few deep breaths, repeating a cue word, or doing a rhythmic sequence of movements. Studies on golfing, bowling, and water polo find that short rituals can lead to more consistent and accurate performance under Perhaps you remember the dire predictions from the analysts. The fall-off in housing threatened to drag down the entire economy. High energy prices put the kibosh on consumer spending. Runaway inflation was poised to take off. David Wyss is an economist at Standard & Poor's. He says in the end none of those things happened it in the final three months of last year.
For four centuries the Viking declined, the people of the Shetland Islands off the north coast of Scotland continued to sell their goods through the North European Hanseatic League. The Hanses merchants bought shiploads of salted fish and in return the islanders got cash, grain, cloth and other goods. This lasted until the Act of Union between Scotland and England in 1707. This act prohibited the Hansa merchants from sheltering with Scotland. Consequently, Shetland went into an economic depression. The independent farmers of Shetland had to sell their land and were then obligated to pay rent, eventually becoming serfs.
The first migratory birds from Asia are showing up in Alaska. It's an annual event, but this time the stakes are higher for human beings. The federal government is spending millions of dollars to see if those birds are carrying H5 and 1 the deadly strain of avian influenza. In Alaska alone, the goal is to test on screen more than 15,000 birds this summer in full. Surveillance effort is still somewhat of a work in progress. Elizabeth Arnold describes it in this National Geographic radio expedition. The first migratory birds from Asia are showing up in Alaska. It's an annual event, but this time the stakes are higher for human beings. The federal government is spending millions of dollars to see if those birds are carrying H5 and 1 the deadly strain of avian influenza. In Alaska alone, the goal is to test on screen more than 15,000 birds this summer in full. Surveillance effort is still somewhat of a work in progress. Elizabeth Arnold describes it in this National Geographic radio expedition. This is a poem she wrote in Oregon. We used to own a house on the Oregon coast, which is a lot like Tasmania. It's about a blue moon, which is when you have two full moons in the course of one month. And this is called August Moon. One reason I love this poem is that it says something that I don't believe has ever been said before by any poet in any language. This is a poem she wrote in Oregon. We used to own a house on the Oregon coast, which is a lot like Tasmania. It's about a blue moon, which is when you have two full moons in the course of one month. And this is called August Moon. One reason I love this poem is that it says something that I don't believe has ever been said before by any poet in any language. Journalists need to work with a range of technologies. In computer degree, there is a new module in artificial intelligence. The guidelines are due to be updated shortly.
The Student Service Center is located on the main campus behind the library.